I'm Matt Smith, today on Upfront. It has pitted neighbor against neighbor, this versus that. The Mequon Thienesville School Board recall. Three school board members facing recall speak out right here on Upfront. Then, President Biden's Build Back Better agenda. Every day I think things are moving closer to agreement. Congressman Mark Pocan on whether Democrats can get it done. And the nonpartisan audit of Wisconsin's 2020 election. Will it settle anything? Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Smith today in for Adrian. We begin today with Democrats' efforts to get President Biden's Build Back Better agenda over the finish line. Reports say the big social spending bill, which contains a lot of progressive priorities, is being whittled down from the initial $3.5 trillion to about $2 trillion. The president has been personally negotiating with Democratic lawmakers, one of them being Wisconsin Congressman Mark Pocan. Congressman joins us from Capitol Hill. Congressman, good to see you. Good to see you, Matt. Is there any scenario at this point, Congressman, where no deal is reached and neither infrastructure or this second bill is passed? You know, there's every scenario uh, you could always say out in D.C., but I don't find that a probable scenario. I mean, it's I, I still think more probable that I will sprout hair um, <laughs> than uh, that we won't get this done, because I think people are really working on it in good faith. You know, there's several hundred Democrats in the House and 48 in the Senate that are ready to go now. Um, there's a couple holdouts in the Senate, maybe a handful in the House. And uh, every day, I think things are moving closer to agreement. And, you know, these are democratic values. These are things that match what the American people have been asking for. And I, I wouldn't want to be that one person who holds up the agenda and has to go back to their district and say, yeah, I, I'm the one who cost you uh, help for paying for child care. I'm the one who cost you uh, dental vision and hearing coverage uh, under Medicare. I, I think no one wants to take that line. There's reporting now the White House is pushing for a floor vote this week on both of these bills. Is that likely in any scenario? I think by this week, um, it's possible, uh, but it's really going to be up to a couple of the senators who've really been, I think, the holdouts up to this point. Um, I've always said it doesn't matter exactly what day we vote on this. What's important is what's in the package. And, you know, I think because there is good faith negotiation and there are some really great things for people in Wisconsin uh, in this bill, uh, I just want to make sure we get it right. You know, we're going to have a tax cut for 40 million American families via the child tax credit. You're reducing the cost of goods for uh, people in Wisconsin, uh, from lower drug prices to uh, expansion of care and Medicare for dental, vision, and hearing, uh, to these provisions to help people pay for child care and so much more. Um, we're also creating uh, a significant number of jobs. Uh, it was $3 million in the package uh, that we passed in the House, so it's probably going to be slightly smaller under what we'll wind up with. And uh, again, under the president's goal, it's completely paid for. So, you know, it's a really good package right now. People will really see a lot of benefit. So my main concern is that we get the right things in there. Uh, when we pass it is, is less important. We'll get to that in a second. You were at the White House earlier this week. You, you've met with President Biden several times. What have you told the president? What has the president told you? And who's making the demands here? Yeah, I mean, the president largely, you know, we've had his back. We support his agenda. Originally, it was a $6 trillion bill that got negotiated down to a $3.5 trillion bill and this smaller infrastructure bill. And, and now it's going to come down probably a little bit more. But at the end of the day, with what we're passing, uh, along with the rescue plan we passed earlier this year, this will be the most significant uh, set of bills to go through Congress probably since FDR as far as helping the American people. So um, really, we're just kind of strategizing with the president, trying to explain our priorities. And, you know, what I told him personally, Matt, was, you know, you've got things that the American people are really going to benefit from. You're like the house on the block that gives out the full-size Hershey bars. Uh, you're not the guy with the black licorice. You know, go out there and talk about what's in there as much as possible, because when people know what's in there and how their family's going to benefit, this program gets even more popular. You're on the inside of these negotiations. There's some big changes being proposed to the Build Back Better proposal. I uh, want to quickly try to get you to confirm some of these and ask you a broader question after this. Uh, free community college is likely out? So I'm not going into particulars because there's nothing in pen yet, Matt. I don't mean to be coy on this. It's just because there isn't a final agreement 
especially with two senators. Um, I don't know exactly where the package is going to end, so I don't want to tell you something and then a couple of days later it may change. Let me just quickly then walk through a, a, other the proposals floating out there. The president has talked about limiting the child tax credit payments to just one year, federal paid parental leave reduced from 12 weeks to four weeks, potential reductions to climate change, clean energy requirements. Are all of these provisions you could get behind and still vote for this bill if these were to become, in fact, part of the final bill? Yeah, Matt, there's never been a proposal yet with that on paper, right? So I, I can't react to something that I actually haven't seen. What I can tell you, though, is uh, it is correct that some programs are going to be shortened from what was originally in a $6 trillion package or even a $3.5 trillion package. It has to. Uh, but we're trying to keep more programs in there. I mean, I think that the child care provisions alone are a game changer. It's the idea is that you'd pay no more than 7% of your income for childcare. That could, for a family of a median income in Wisconsin, that could mean five or $10,000 in savings if they have one or two children who are in childcare right now. Um, there's some really big provisions there. So we wanna make sure that uh, those are, are kept there largely intact. But because we don't have a final proposal, I, I really can't react to it uh, unless I see it on paper. For you and for progressive Democrats, is there is there a red line where you will say, we we will not vote for this if this isn't in? And can your caucus be to blame if this falls apart? Well, actually, I think we're the ones who get credit for actually anything even coming together. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, I think one of the, the senators only cares about the infrastructure bill. Um, and because of that, uh, by us not voting on that, we've moved from zero dollars to two trillion dollars uh, of, of you know, robust benefits for the American people in the Build Back Better agenda, which is, again, a reminder of the president's agenda. So, you know, by having the president's back and by being willing to hold out a little longer, we've moved from zero to two trillion in, a, in about a week. Um, that's pretty good progress. A busy week ahead in Washington. Congressman Mark Pocan, thanks for your time, like always. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. The Wisconsin Department of Justice is suing to stop subpoenas special counsel Mike Gableman issued to the Wisconsin Elections Commission. The DOJ is asking a Dane County judge to declare the subpoenas invalid and unenforceable. The judge will hear the case tomorrow morning. Later on up front, the nonpartisan audit of the 2020 election in Wisconsin and those recommendations for change. But first, the recall of four school board members in mequon Thienesville. We haven't done anything wrong. We have not abdicated our duty to an unelected official. The board members fighting back next on Upfront.